if you are new to this channel place your welcome and today we want to talk about life it is story time and i want to share my story with you now this story of my life is really long And therefore, yeah, it's going to take quite long for me to finish it up. But it is important that I speak this story and encourage very many people not to lose hope. I was raised in the remote areas of the eastern part of the Pearl of Africa, that is Uganda, my motherland. I was born to a very young lady by then, who was still studying and happened to get pregnant with me and give birth to me. I thank her so much because at her tender age, she was such a brave woman. Very many people of this generation cannot handle the pressure of being a young mother. But that is not a reason why I'm doing this video today. I'm doing this video today to bring to your understanding what life exactly is. Life is a journey, a journey with a destination. And that journey has a lot of challenges. It is not an easy journey. Life in the other end side is not difficult, but the journey is a difficult one. What makes the journey difficult? It is because we don't know the path. Once you know the path, you don't keep losing your way when you're moving to a destination. Many people have lost their way because they did not know the path. Knowing the path in this journey of life is a very important aspect as far as reaching your destination is concerned. If you did, don't know the path, you will meander and meander and meander around the same location. What is the path that I'm talking here? The path is your purpose. Once you grasp it and understand your purpose in life, it will be much easier for you to reach your destination, to feel the real impact, the real reason as to why you were created. But once you don't know your purpose, you are bound to make very many mistakes. Most of us think that the achievements other people have made, the path other people have taken is our own path too. That is very wrong. That is the very reason you should never look up to anybody because you are not created to be that person. 
there is a difference between looking up to somebody and getting lessons from somebody or getting lessons from another person's experience or another person's life. Most of us feel we should walk the real path other people are taking. No, that is not the case. That is only one aspect of life that I've handled, that life is churning. The other way I would interpret life is like this. Like a car drive to an unknown destination, so is the journey of life. God created life in such a way that somehow, somehow, we just see things unveiling to us. But they don't unveil to us while we are seated in our comfort zones. These things unveil to us while we are walking the journey of life. While we are working hard, while we are staying focused on the purpose, we see the things that God meant for us start to unveil. So that is another way you would understand life. That it is an amazing race a race of challenge but you're not challenging anybody you are challenging yourself that is what life is life is a journey of beautiful triumphs and challenges and wherever you are today in that journey of life be encouraged that God is on your side. He will not leave you. Just push. Push on. Push on. Go an extra mile to your destination. The steps get harder as you are approaching your destination. Every dream come true is a testimony. And for you to get a testimony, you must go through a test. Life is full of testimonies as it is full of tests. You have to work so hard and pass your tests. The time you're going through a test in life, it is not the time to cry. It is not the time to shed tears. But it is the time to get down and take your notes. Take hold of your lessons that you've learned from that test and wipe away your tears. Get up on your feet and walk with your chin straight and your head looking forward to your destiny. I say life is a story, a book with many chapters. Some chapters of life illuminate and make our hearts to dance. Others frighten and make the heart to leap. That is life. That is life in its making. Life is a balance, a balance between challenge and overcoming. The times when you're full of triumph and the times 
when you're full or challenged. That is how it is created. There is nothing you can do about that. That is the way life is supposed to be. It is designed by God. Those challenges make us stronger and the triumphs make us happier. That is the balance. That is the equation and that is the law of life. So you should learn to live with life the way it is created and meant to be. Whatever your story is today, I want you to embrace it, picturize it, and prioritize your story. Pray to God that the desired outcome and what you have to learn in that story so that God fulfills his purpose through that particular story of your life and bring that situation into actualization. Do what has to be done in the physical world and to bring about God's will for your life. I would say life is a school it offers a number of lessons to learn. And this school of life does not sympathize with anybody. It does not sympathize with any person, the young, the old, the poor, the rich, the abled and the disabled, life treats the same. And the principles of life are the same for every person. Life does not favor anyone. It is all about mastering the skill of navigating through the ups and downs of life. The connecting dots of everyone's journey towards his or her life dream are hidden in God. Look at the story of Joseph. Even Joseph's parents themselves never knew the destiny of Joseph. They never knew it. His brothers turned out to hate him. They never knew his journey in life, except God. Our talents and knowledge comes from God. A little deeper into the story of Joseph, his dream attracted anger and jealousy from his ten brothers and he was sold as a slave as a result. Imagine his dream attracted jealous and anger from his brothers and he was sold as a slave. It doesn't mean that something very wrong was done to Joseph. That was a step forward for Joseph to his destiny. The challenge of being hated by his brothers or being sold as a slave was pushing Joseph a step towards his destiny. What are the challenges you're going through today? And what do you think about them? Have you ever sat down and imagined why 
that situation around you is like that. Sometimes maybe it is there to push you to your next level in life. But what do we do when we have a lot of clouding of challenges around us? We think life has come to an end. We think the journey of life has come to an end. But I want to tell you, those challenges build the courage in us and they push us forward. They remove the fear that keeps holding us back and pushes towards our destiny. Those challenges are but they are just lessons. They are just course units in our purpose. They are preparing us to reach our destiny. God is in control of our lives. Your life and my life are under God's control. If we learn that God is supernatural, he cannot leave us alone. Even in our hardest times, He cannot leave us alone. We can depend on Him for our strength, for our encouragement, for our comfort. We can depend on God. He will move us on and on and on. We shall not get weary. He will encourage us. He will build us. He will strengthen us. And we shall rise up and mount on wings like eagles and move forward without getting weary until we reach our destination. That is a part, a little bit of my story. Just as I told you that I was raised in the remote ends of the Pearl of Africa. And having been born to a teenage mother, I grew up with my parents, my grandparents, my grandma and my grandpapa because my mother had to go back to school to study and pursue her career. For me, my story is atypical. I always compare my story with a child, a young child in African setting who is learning to ride a bicycle. In typical village African setting, we do not have children's bicycle. Children learn to ride a bicycle using an adult bicycle. A bicycle which is probably taller than the child is riding. And therefore, when you start to ride the bicycle, you don't start riding it sitting on, on, the, on the rider's seat. You start riding it uh, by putting your leg on the sides of the bicycle and your hand, one hand, holds the rider's seat and one hand holds the bicycle hands in front to control the in front tie. You can imagine at a young age, you're riding a bicycle, which is probably uh, doubling your weight. 
but you are able you are in charge to control the bicycle that is typical of my life i grew up from childhood knowing life is full of challenge because i was born in a challenge itself and i was raised in that kind of challenging environment i think that is not enough at the age of 3 years i knew how to tread on my little feet to the well to fetch water with my other a little bit older siblings i did not go to the well because i was pushed to go no i went to the well because i knew you had everyone had to fetch water that they use so even when my my siblings went to fetch water i always wanted to be part of the team going to fetch water in the well and the well was a little bit far it was almost a kilometer from home but that did not stop me i remember i myself clearly crying when that little jerrican one little jerrican can you imagine fell off my head i would cry scream for help as the rest of my siblings are walking home with water i vividly remember those moments walking back with water was painful the hot sun scratching my feet scorching my feet it was hot and and the little jerrican was heavy for me at that edge but i felt the joy of walking that water up to home i would feel have achieved something in life and what i clearly remember in my childhood was that i was grandpapa's favorite girl since i was the only young girl at home grandfather loved me so much and i was named after my grandmother so he loved me so much but being the only young child staying with my grandparents i was always grandpapa's favorite but not only the baby his favorite I was always the one present to be sent that makes a difference I remember very well every morning my grandmother would wake me up in the morning and she tells me Marcy you supposed to fetch water you supposed to sweep the compound you supposed to sweep the kitchen by then i was now a bit older i was about 8 9 years of age and what i remember she would give me the instructions and i would see how work behind 
the kitchen, there was a small road, a small path that was heading to the gardens. She would put her hoe on her shoulder and wrap her sweater around her neck and carry a little bottle of water. And she walks. And immediately grandma walks to go to the garden. I would pull my small little blanket and cover my head because I did not want to get out so early in the morning. So I would cover my head and get that last bit of sleep in the morning. But what was challenging, that last sleep in the morning was always a blow off for me. I would wake up late to the noise of the hungry goats yelling just behind the hat, small hat where we sleep. That was my routine life. I would wake up every day to that kind of situation. And I remember very well, my grandma would wake up early, go to the garden, call my grandfather, my grandpapa, slept up to morning in his bed. And you walk up to the rising of the sun to sit in his comfortable couch and listen to the morning news. I was perplexed. I kept wondering why. And I remember I saw it in my mind. My grandpapa walked the journey to his destination. I reached there and now he was a retired policeman enjoying his pension at home. While my grandmother never even finished her primary school and she stayed home. She was a housewife. She had to work so hard even in her old age to earn for something for herself. I picked a lesson. These are two people in the same house. One person goes to the garden every day and the other person stays at home I saw it was not worth it. I appreciated it now that I appreciate why it was important for my teenage mother to leave me as a tender baby to be raised by my grandmama as she went back to school to pursue her studies. I appreciate you, mommy, so much. I know someday you will watch this video. I want you to know that I cherish you and I respect you for the decision you made at that young age as a mother who gave birth to me. You made a hard decision to leave me as a little baby who was still breastfeeding. You left me with grandmama and you pursued your destiny. And you've made me what I am today. I'm proud of you, mama. And I pray may the Lord bless you.
so I'm still on my story. I watched my grandpapa stay at home while my grandmama went to the garden every day. These are two different people. My grand 